Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. As you can see, yes, I am doing another Talking Head video today, but I got some really important news directly from AMD about their 4th gen desktop Ryzen CPUs, so I just had to discuss it, and because I wasn't planning on doing a video today, this is really the only way that I could do it. Still, my next video will be normal, and I've got quite a bit of other stories to go over. But first, I get tons of emails and messages pretty much every day asking for hardware suggestions. So I finally decided to create a kit.co account where I list tons of personal suggestions like CPUs, GPUs, things like that. And I actually put a little description kind of explaining who may want this, why you'd want it and things like that. Now, I will say that this is fairly early. You can see I don't have too many parts here, but I'm going to be adding a lot more as well as doing builds like a $500 build, $1,000 build, just so I can suggest parts for you guys. And when you follow the links to make the purchase, it does help the channel out. Anyway, you can check that out at kit.co slash gamer meld or in the description below. Anyway, let's get to the first story. As many of you know, AMD has actually been separating their GPU architecture. They've got RDNA, which is more focused on their gaming GPUs, and then CDNA, which is actually going to be their compute GPU architecture. And what's really interesting is that AMD's Mark Papermaster has actually said that their first CDNA-based Radeon Instinct is going to be arriving in the second half of 2020. Probably much later 2020, but either way, they have confirmed it and that's going to be pretty interesting because it'll be nice to see what they can do when their primary focus isn't uh, like basically everything when they're when they're able to focus on one particular type of performance. Remember that GCN, which is what they've been using up until this point, has actually been an all around architecture. So that's kind of one reason why AMD cards were really, really good at compute, like their actual gaming cards were really good at compute back when uh, Bitcoin was really big. It's mostly just because they didn't separate their architectures. Well, they are now. So like I said, it's gonna be pretty interesting to see how that ends up. Next up for today, we have some interesting stuff. It looks like we're seeing quite a bit of new information on Pro G processors. You can see they have the Ryzen 3 Pro 4350G. Now these are uh, desktop Pro APUs. So these are Zen 2 based. So anyway, you can see that basically AMD is taking these APUs this time very seriously. And you can see the naming scheme is actually really similar to their Pro Series 4 laptops, like the uh, the U processors, the ultra low power processors. But with that said, oh, I have some unfortunate news, at least if this ends up being correct. We have a leak or a, it, I would definitely call it a rumor at this point, it doesn't seem too sure, but from Igor's lab, you can see that he mentions that the Ryzen 4000 Renoir desktop APUs are going to be launching on 7.7, which is actually something that we recently saw in another leak, but I'm going to be getting to that leak in just a few seconds as well. Um, but you can see that apparently they're going to be doing a silent launch that's only for system integrators. Now, he does talk about uh, Radeon Pro pretty extensively. I'm hoping that this is more just for Radeon Pro APUs, but I don't no, I really hope this is incorrect because obviously that means anyone who's been really excited about getting um, eight core, 16 thread APU won't be able to. Now, as I've said in the past, I really wouldn't suggest this for gamers. I'd way more suggest it for professionals who just need some kind of GPU just to get by, just to have a display. But gamers should definitely stick to discrete GPUs. Now, I do know that the very low end ones have been really good for gamers. But since the GPU hasn't really gotten much better, I don't really see any reason for gamers to upgrade this unless they just do a little bit of gaming on the side, but primarily focus on the professional applications. Simply put, Getting a regular CPU is going to be cheaper and then getting even a really cheap discrete GPU, at least in my opinion, would be much better. Simply put, you don't need eight cores with the iGPU. Of course, there are some arguments for upgrading later and things like that, but that's my personal opinion. But regardless, that will be sad if true. And speaking of things that are going to be sad if true, you can see that Amazon France accidentally listed the PlayStation 5. Now you can see here that it is posted by PlayStation and it actually shows a November 20th release date. But the biggest thing here is that it shows 499 euros. Now with that said, that is for the one with Blu-ray and apparently it listed it at 399 euros for the one without. 
But the sad thing here is that that likely means that we're looking at $499 for the one without and $599 US dollars for the one with. It's definitely making some of those rumors seem pretty accurate. So the PlayStation 5 is probably going to be a pretty expensive console. Although given the specs, I'd really argue that isn't too surprising. Now, lastly for today, and really the main reason I'm doing this video now, is regarding the recent rumor from DigiTimes. As you can see, it says that TSMC's 7nm EUV Zen 3 architecture Ryzen 4000 series processor is coming at CES in January 2021. Now, as many of you know, that was pretty much a huge bummer. But luckily, AMD has actually come out with this statement. And my AMD rep actually sent me this. It says, AMD confirms that the rumor on Zen 3 delay is inaccurate. Now, you may have noticed that they specifically said Zen 3. But remember that they are referring to this rumor, which is specifically talking Ryzen 4000. Not only that, but earlier in the year, AMD did confirm that Ryzen 4000 was coming this year. So if it hasn't been delayed, that means it is happening. Of course, you could argue that them using Zen 3 is them referencing to, say, the Epic CPUs, and maybe that's true, but like I said, I highly doubt it, and this rumor that they're referring to is specifically referencing Ryzen 4000 itself, and they said it is inaccurate. Anyway, so while that does it for today, I do know that I kind of ramble a lot when I do these videos, but once again, my next video is going to be a normal one, and hopefully you did like that I was able to get this out there to you. Hopefully this is good news for you, and let me know what you think down in the comments below, and as always, have a great day.